While looking for something different from the deserts of California, I drove east back to the copper state of Arizona. I was headed to the southeast corner past Tucson, an area known as Cochise County. Although sparsely populated, there was at least one attraction for me, the Whitewater Draw. Whitewater Draw is a wildlife area set aside in 1997 by the Arizona Game and Fish Department. It's an important wetland for migrating birds and hosts a variety of wildlife all year round. This is not a bird sanctuary, however, as wildlife area is a euphemism for both viewing and hunting. There is free camping, but space is very limited, just a small circle around a pit toilet. Try going midweek for your best chance at a spot. A little stream feeds the wetland, which is a haven for small birds. But the large part of the draw is the McNeil Playa, an area of open shallow water and an expanse of muddy plain. This is what attracts not only the waterfowl, but a steady stream of bird watchers and nature photographers, all enjoying the winter migration from well-kept viewing platforms and trails. And what can you expect to view? Well, there's no shortage of ducks, and plenty of shorebirds as well. The resident birds of prey, and a few familiar to those in the north. But there's more than birds here. Along with rabbits, there's a healthy deer population and many javelinas and coyotes. In the evening, the bats come out to munch on insects. But bird is still the word here. And while some are very active, others take the day as a chance for a little siesta. But mid-afternoon signals the arrival of the star attractions. These, of course, are sandhill cranes, who spent the morning feasting on the cultivated corn and wheat fields in the area, but return in the afternoon for a break. There's as many as 20,000 of them here in the midwinter months, but by March the numbers are fewer. This hawk seems quite amused as he sits on his perch and surveys the commotion. Well, this place has really gone to the birds, and if the constant trumpeting wears you thin after a few hours, you might want to check out one of the other attractions in the area. Remember when I referred to Arizona as being the Copper State? A few miles south and you'll find the meaning of that phrase. It's a little town called Bisbee. Boasting the best year-round climate on Earth, this former mining town is now a thriving art and historic community. Nestled right in the Mule Mountains, it has a beautifully kept downtown district. But the residents are all perched up in the hills. Mules and shacks of yesterday were replaced by balconies with a view. There's no shortage of museums and historic landmarks, but it's the eclectic little shops and galleries that attract visitors by the thousands. Make sure you bring your wallet.
But if shopping isn't your thing, maybe a little exercise will do you good, as the streets give way to thousands of steps, all waiting to be ascended. Now if your running shoes are all tied up, you can still appreciate the color and culture of this unique enclave. Which includes a little magic and a little bit of a cult. You can even get a tour of the Queen Mine. However, if you pass through the Copper King Canyon, you can't drive by without seeing the most bizarre ghost town in Arizona. For those who watch The Twilight Zone and Outer Limits on TV, it all looks strangely familiar. But this isn't TV, and it's not the past. Only a place called Lowell, Arizona. It's kinda like everyone just left at the same time, perhaps the day the mine closed. Frozen in silence after the apocalypse, the clincher is the title of Lowell's only road, appropriately named Erie Street. It was back to the birds for me. Dusk in the wetlands offers a unique transformation that the day visitors don't see. In some secret strategy, the sandhill cranes regroup in the failing light, flying deeper into the mudflats to bed down for the night. Once the flock feels safe, the trumpeting tones down to a distant murmur, almost like a field of crickets. All is again calm in the ponds and the shallows. Yet this is the time for the night creatures to awaken. quiet flutter of bat wings is the only sound in the deepest part of the night. Yet by the first light of dawn, it all starts over again. But it was time for me to fly the coop as well. Well, I hope you like this video and give it a thumbs up. Always check out my others and please subscribe.